Morning, uh, welcome back to Veggie Plot. Um, winter's coming, isn't it? And it's getting to that time of year now where we've got all our chilies and tomatoes and we're desperately trying to get everything sort of ripened off and sort of done and finished really before winter sets in. With that in mind and the fact that, you know, the greenhouse at this time of year and where it's positioned here in our garden, uh, we've got a lot of trees on the easterly side, so it doesn't get a lot of sun until later on in the day. Whereas if you look down the end of the garden, you can see the polytunnels being in full sun all morning. So a lot of these uh, little peppers, the Bequino yellows, these lovely little yellow chilies and the big red sort of sweet peppers we've got coming on here and these lovely spaghetti chilies. I need to get all of these out of here today and into the polytunnel. I want to show you how and where and why I do that in the polytunnel. As you can see, uh, it's been a bit of a change since the last time you were in there. Emptied quite a lot of stuff, got a lot of the tomatoes out. We've still got um, some of these lovely pink Barclay tie-dye, which the colouring is not quite the same, I've noticed. Not quite as rich coloured, but they are almost ripe. So I'm going to pick all of these pink Barclay tie-dye today and get these plants out. Um, also behind you, we've got some of the Brad's Atomic Grape and uh, most of them are fine, but one or two of them are beginning to split. So it's time now to get all of those out as well. I've been really pleased with these Brad's Atomic Grapes this year. First time I've ever grown them. They're uh, really quite delicious. I know some people have said that they haven't found them to be good, but I found the trick with them is you've really got to leave them to ripen up fully. Uh, whether indoors or out but when they start getting all these red tinges on especially when you cut them open near the tip if it's sort of reddish inside in the flesh near the tip it's really really delicious so if you've given them a go and they haven't worked for you it might be worth another try because yeah i'm pleased and they're definitely on the list again for next year That's the last of the tomatoes, the uh, pink Barclay tie-dye and the Brad's Atomic Grape. That's got all of those out, uh, take them outside. <laughs> okay, actually one thing I wanted to show you, tell you about is uh, the aubergines that they did. They were doing really bad in here this year. I think it was the temperature and basically when things cooled down they all started pollinating, which is fantastic. So I just wanted to go and harvest one and just show it to you. This really big one on this plant here, absolute beauty. These are, these are black beauties. Uh, I've got another two or three coming on that one there. But because I want to put in the shelving, I want to take that one off and then we'll have that plant out. Uh, but down here, there are lots more coming here. We've got one here, we've got another one here which is a cracker. Look at that one. Absolute beauty. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five on those over there. So yeah, the actual black beauties did, did well in the end. I was about to give up on them. Shall I please my wife? No end. <laughs> she loves aubergines. Yeah, really good. So what we do is we cut them in half, scoop the insides out, put all sorts of stuff in it, and then pile it all back in and a bit of cheese on top and then roast it in the oven. They're absolutely delicious, but yeah. Really pleased with that one. I now want to have this plant out. Mm. Mm. It's grown really tall, but uh, we uh, don't need it anymore. Still got flowers on, <laughs> still, but too late in the season for anything to happen with this. So, right, I'm gonna get rid of this one and then we'll put in a couple of shelf brackets here for the chilies. Now, how the shelving works here in the polytunnel, the idea is, you know, is to make it as flexible a space as possible. So. I have these bits of weld mesh, I don't know if you've seen these before. It's basically sort of a galvanised mesh and it's strapped to the um, scaffold poles here to give me these vertical growing spaces. But because they're this sort of um, square space in the weld mesh, it enables me to put through these what are dahlia stakes. I've just picked up these quite cheap from the local uh, DIY store. Um, it just sits in the square you know, a hole on the weld mesh. And it just gives me this place where I can put things on, whether it's watering trays and plants and so on. So I shall put a big watering tray on here and then put the chili plants on top. Right, 
I've just had to make some modifications to that bit actually. So what I've done, let me show you, is I've swapped out those two bars that I had here for these three because they fit better against the net, uh, the polythene there. So they're in there and I've put another one in here and another one here. So let's just go and get some trays. So it's just, these are just big garden sort of watering trays. I just put them on top like this and because I don't want any slugs or bugs climbing up from the ground and getting on the tray I'm just going to nip the tips out of these or this aubergine and get rid of that yeah and then that just keeps it away from the edge of the tray I do this particularly actually for young seedlings I find you know if there's any slugs and stuff on the ground they don't ever get up onto this tray so I just keep that trimmed. Right let's go and get another one for here and I'll just put that one on there and then these spaces that we've got at the end I've got smaller trays for them. Right, these are the other trays that fit in these gaps uh, just go in there like that so it gives me a sort of a full shelf of uh, places to grow stuff or to uh, I say ripen the chilies. Right let's go and get some of the spaghetti chilies shall we? Look at the size of this. I, said, I don't know if it's made a difference this year but in previous years what I did with the spaghetti chilies was I nipped the tips out you know as everybody says you should to increase sort of growth and production but this year I didn't do that. I felt a bit rebellious really. <laughs> anyway so I didn't do it let me put it down, it's getting a bit heavy and I'll uh, bring you over and show you what I'm talking about. Yeah these <laughs> are absolutely enormous aren't they and loads of chilies and I think it's basically because I didn't trim them out. Um, also maybe the new watering system worked um, but yeah the plants are it seems much much happier if you don't trim the tips out. Um, in order to create side you know, branching. I think they can take quite a while to ripen as well sometimes so um, by letting the first fruits that come on uh, ripen you've got sort of more chance of them being ready by the end of the season. Right let's go and get all the others shall we? Uh, this is plant number two. <laughs> I see all those chilies on there. I've already picked actually a big uh, handful of them uh, already which are indoors and I'll perhaps come out and show you in a bit but yeah these are best plants I've had uh, ever of the spaghetti chilies uh, and I, I really enjoy growing these. I'm just looking for a cane because I think it's going to fall over. Uh, right <laughs> let's see maybe this will help. Okay that'll do for the moment. Right I'm going to get the last one more green chilies on this one but perhaps I've picked some off it I can't remember <laughs> but that one can go in there and I just uh, had this idea actually for propping them up I've got some off cuts of some wood here but I suppose you could use bamboo canes again they're nice thin long pieces and the idea is to slide them behind and in front of the chilies Oh good, pleased with that and that will stop them toppling where they shouldn't. So I've got some other Pequino reds and yellows so I'm going to bring them down next. I'm going to put some here uh, and some there. I'm going to move all the onions out of the way. Now <laughs> I wanted to show you these because I don't know if you've grown them but you know in supermarkets you see those little jars of oil with little chilies in and things and you can put them onto pizzas and things. Well I quite fancied um, something like that. That bit broke off so don't want that. But yeah I wanted to show you these. These are I think it's Buquino yellows and you can also get which I've got up in the <laughs> greenhouse some Buquino reds. But yeah they make these tiny little chilies. They're not hot, not too hot, quite mild actually. Um, yeah and you can sort of soak them and use them on pizza. Yeah really like these they're just uh, so cute and masses and masses of chilies. Yeah wonderful. Right there here is the second Buquino yellow. <laughs> I'm in here somewhere. There are hundreds of them literally hundreds of little chilies. 
So that one can go there. Right, here's one of the Bacchino Reds. If you can see all those li little chilies on there, absolutely hundreds of them. Yeah, quite good fun to grow these. So put that one in there. This is the last little Bacchino Red. You see those? <laughs> right, let's put that in there. Okay, right, go and see what else we've got, shall we? This one, uh, a bit different to the others. This is um, a Bacchino, not Bacchino, I was thinking of that one. Uh, this is an orange pepperoncini. Um, actually, let's have let's snip this one off. Yeah, this is the orange pepperoncini. Uh, really interesting, not too hot. They look like they should be really devilishly hot, don't they? But they're not. So yeah, they're really good. What I do is I dry these up and pepper them, I powder them and use them for sprinkling on pizzas and food for savouries and hot curries and bits and bobs. So yeah, they're good. Yeah, this is how it's looking at the moment. I've got all the chilies and peppers lined up that side and one section over there. So these are the orange pepperoncinis. A lot of green ones here to ripen up. These are the Bacchino Reds, absolutely hundreds of those. Spaghetti chilies all coming on, looking really good here. So I can get up to a higher level. So this is the, this is the most I've had of them ever. So I think this way of growing in pots, using the watering system and not trimming out is a really good way to go for these. Then we've got the Bacchino Yellows, all these beautiful little droplets of yellow. So I'm going to be jarring these up in oil and saving them and dehydrating some for using in the cooking. The last Bacchino Red. And then on this side, these are the ones I were, was going to pick, but I'm, I'm not going to. These are a mixture of Aji chilies, which are these, which look like a standard sort of chili shape. Uh, and these are Mad Hatter chilies, which you can see here. So th as you can see, there are well, I don't know, hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of them to harvest here, but I'm not going to do them today. I'd save them for another video. And then moving on down, we've got the unripe Mad Hatter chilies, apart from a couple in there, which are ripe. Uh, and then we've got the big red peppers, which are from saved supermarket seeds. These are still to ripen up. And then these are sort of overwintered. These are grown in the ground between the tomatoes, these Mad Hatter, and they're not ripe yet, but I'm hoping now they've got a lot more sun, the tomatoes are gone, they'll ripen up. Now, oh, finally, lemongrass. I brought this in uh, this, this week, um, and there are so many lemongrass stalks in here. It's really done well. I uh, Basically, I had this outdoors most of this year. Um, overwintered it in the polytunnel and then put it back out in the summer and it's really loved it. I've also potted it on as well, but yeah. So that's it at the moment. That's what the polytunnel looks like today. So as always, if you've enjoyed this, please do consider liking, subscribing and hitting the bell button for notifications. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.